least cut it off. So trypsin EDTA is really helpful when we're passaging cells. When we're growing cells in culture, we need to give them plenty of space. So typically we don't want to grow them until they're more than like 80% or so confluent, so covering the surface of the dish. When we're growing these adhere cells, maybe something like HEK, HeLa, something like that. Um, and so what we do is passage these cells. These cells are really good at dividing, um, and so as long as you give them enough space and enough nutrients. So your job as a scientist, well one of the jobs if you're doing this cell culture is to keep them happy, give them enough space and enough food. And since they're going to keep growing and dividing, you're going to have to keep like splitting or passaging them. Basically you take the cells that are on the plate and you split them and give them more space, plate them on a new dish. Um, in order to do this, you need to get them off of the plate that they were currently on. And one of the common ways that we do this is with trypsin um, EDTA mix. So trypsin is a serine protease. It's a protein cutter. It's a pretty generic one. Um, there are some protein cutters that are really, really specific about what they cut. And those are really great for when we're doing like um, recombinant protein expression. We're putting a tag on our protein and we want to cut it off specifically. We want a really specific sequence. But trypsin is pretty generic, um, so it's good for like in our bodies we make trypsin in our like um, digestive system to help cut up food. Um, we can use trypsin in the lab for various purposes, and here one of our purposes is to cut up the protein-protein connections that are helping keep the cells adherent on the plate um, and connected to one another. So basically, these cells all. They're right when they're on the plate, they're stuck on the plate and they're stuck to one another with a variety of different proteins, it's like human proteins and stuff. Um, and one of the ways to break up those connections is to cut the proteins because of the protein protein connections. Um, these proteins are also dependent on like divalent cations, so like um, typically calcium. Um, so when they're bound to calcium, they're going to be in a conformation or shape that makes them want to. Um, that makes them bind to one another better. And if you take, a, so if you can take away the calcium, then that is going to make them weaker, um, the connections weaker, and help trypsin out. One of the ways you can like take away the metals is with the EDTA. So we use like a trypsin EDTA solution. EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, is um, is a chelator. Um, a chelator is a compound that binds to metals, and basically it binds it in a lot of space spots, and since it's binding in a lot of spots, it's going to hide it from those proteins that want it. If it hides that from the proteins that want it, then those proteins aren't going to be able to make those connections, or the, the connections are going to be weaker. And because those connections are weaker, then the trypsin is going to have an easier time cutting them apart. So we can have EDTA um, in, in this trypsin mix, and that's going to help trypsin help the trypsin do its job. One of these main adherence proteins are coherence. So that stands for calcium dependent adherence. Um, and basically these are these proteins that are going to mediate these cell to cell contacts and these cell to surface contacts and things using these. And these proteins are going to be dependent on calcium as their name suggests. So they have these like five binding sites for calcium in this extracellular domain. And then it kind of like goes into the cell and then it sticks out. And these domains, they have bind to this calcium and the calcium is gonna kind of help them get in the right shape. So you can see here without calcium, it has this one shape and then with calcium, it has this other shape. And then when it's binding to these calcium, it's getting it in the, in the right shape to then form these contacts with other cells. So this is a cool article that I found or just a web page or whatever. And they're trying to model the effects of calcium and various things, how this calcium is activating and making these cells sticky. Um, so thanks to the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign's theoretical and computational biophysics group for a really cool site and I will put uh, a link to it. So when you're growing the cells, you're typically growing them in some sort of media that has like serum in it. Um, so basically like the cell is part of blood, often fetal bovine serum, FBS. The serum has a variety of compounds that are going to inhibit trypsin. These include things like alpha trypsin or antitrypsin. Um, as well as like macroglobulins. So macroglobulins are really cool. They're these like protease inhibitors that inhibit a bunch of different protease types. They kind of like trap them. Um, and then antitrypsin is like this um, serpent, this serine protease inhibitor. So trypsin is a serine protease. And basically this is an inhibitor that is in the blood because what happens is that there, it, although it's called antitrypsin, um, it doesn't just inhibit trypsin. 
And then one of his key jobs in the body is like inhibiting like elastase, which is another protease, another certain protease. And basically that is secreted by like immune cells when there's things in the darn you all sorts of weird healing stuff and things. But you wanna want that heat elastase just like everywhere in your body. So your cells also make, um, your, you like secrete and stuff, this antitrypsin that's going to prevent the, that elastase from just like chewing everything up. That's one of the purposes of this, of having the antitrypsin um, in your blood. And since we're using like blood serum um, in the medium, then that media is going to inhibit the trypsin. This is gonna come in helpful because we don't wanna trypsinize it for too long. But in the beginning, when we want to trypsinize it, we're not gonna to want to have that media present. So when we take our plate of cells, what we're going to do is we're going to want to passage them. First, we wanna check and make sure that they're right, about the right density and nothing funky going on. So give them a look under the microscope. If all looks good, and now you want to passage them, you're going to have to get them off the plate. Um, and so you want to remove the media that was there and then wash it off because um, there can still be traces of all that antitrypsin and that sort of thing. Um, and what you're going to wash it with is typically like PBS without calcium and magnesium. Um, and so we don't want those um, cations there because remember, those are going to help strengthen the connections between the cells and we want to weaken those connections. So we give it um, this wash with this um, PBS so it's like buffered saline so it's just like a pH stabilized salt water um, and basically wash all that stuff off and then we add the trypsin EDTA enough to like cover it typically um, and then we stick it in the incubator so it's 37 incubator that these cells are normally growing in. What you want to do is it typically takes like a couple minutes and you want to keep an eye on it every like 30 seconds or so after that point. Um, what you want to see is that initially they should all be like if you were to look under you can hold it up to the light and you should be able to see that the cells are stuck firmly on there. But what's going to happen is that as the trypsin does its job, when you like float the thing, you're going to be able to see those cells like start floating in things. Once they're all detached, you can sometimes like tap in and stuff if it's taking too long or because you don't want to basically, if this, especially if the cells are like overgrown, you don't want to overgrow the cells. It's going to make it harder for like to trypsinize and you're also going to have like dead cells and stuff when you're doing things. You don't want that. Um, and so when you want to do this, you want to make sure like once the cells are all detached, then you want to stop it. And how you stop it is by adding more of that media with the serum in it that is going to inhibit the, um, the trypsin. Um, and then now that you have the cells in this media solution, you can spin it down, remove that old media, um, suspend it in a little bit of new media, um, and then count the cells with like a hemocytometer or a cell count is what makes things so much easier. Um, it's like an automatic cell counter. Um, but anyway, you count the cells and then you determine what, like, how many cells you want to plate in your new dish, depending on when you want to have to passage them again, and various things like that. Another thing about passaging is you might see, like, on a tube, like, P1 or P2 or P3, that P typically refers to the passage number. You don't want to passage cells too many times because each time they divide, they have a chance to introduce more mutations. I mean, you don't want them to get a bunch of mutations. So typically what you do is and at the early passages, you actually freeze a bunch of stocks. And if you get too far down the line in terms of passages, you go back and thaw one of those original um, early stocks um, so you can have an early passage again. And that would be closer to the original cell line. Um, and another thing, so with the trypsin EDTA, um, typically what you do is so it, we like store it frozen, but then we want to thaw it before we use it. Um, and then we typically make aliquots of it um, so that like 15 in 15 mil tubes or whatever so that we don't have to, if we contaminate one of those aliquots, it's not as big a deal as contaminating the whole bottle. Plus if you want to warm it, like um, unfreeze it, then you don't have to unfreeze the whole thing. Um, so you can make aliquots of store and aliquots are a really good thing when you're trying to keep things sterile. And that red is just that phenol red that we saw before, that pH indicator, um, just so you make sure that the trypsin is at the right pH for it to work. Some, there are other ways to dissociate cells, um, so some that, like scraping and stuff is going to depend on the different cell type. Um, the amount of trypsin you're going to need can also depend on the trips, um, the cell types. This is like 0.05. If your cells are really firmly stuck, you might need something like 0.25. Um, and yeah, so basically, oh, another thing is that this tip, the cell, like the cell flasks that you grow, or like and the dishes and all that you're, that you grow these adherent cells on are typically treated um, for cell culture. So they're gonna have, sometimes they have like some sort of like amino acid coating. So they've got like protein type coating on the bottom. And this is gonna make it so that the adhering, um, the, the things that are in the media that are going to promote the, like the adhesion and growth of these cells, those are going to be able to bind. And um, then those are going to promote the other cells from binding and joining in. And then you get this whole thing about, with like this whole layer of cells and all that great stuff. Um, and 
of it sometimes so sometimes like the plates are treated with the proteins and sometimes the plates are treat, just like treated so that they're more like hydrophilic or stuff so that the protein those proteins will want to bind more easily so there's different types of like cell culture treatments that you can get for the cell types um or for the like plate types and stuff like that so there's a variety of different stuff and then there's also cells that grow on suspension um, and so for those you don't want to treat you want like non-treated or differently treated um things so that things don't stick um and yeah for those you often just have to like dilute it into a different solution it's a lot easier um but anyway these adhesion cells are pretty common like there's all these different cell lines that can grow as adhesion cells um and all of the details are going to vary from cell line to cell line um, but this is just the basics of how we typically passage cells so remove the old media wash it with the pbs without the without the metals add your trypsin eduta put it in 37 give it a couple minutes start checking on it once they all start dissociating then add more of that media with the serum it's going to inhibit everything um, and then spin it down um, take off that old media put in some new media count it and then dilute it to whatever you need in, in order to plate the amount of cells that you want um, at the volume with the volume of media that you want um, and then let them live um, hopefully um, and don't passage them too many times um, go back to those original stocks so that's the basics and hope it helps